What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to go over the top and first modifications that you should do to your Toyota GR86. This is also going to apply to the Subaru BRZ, the Scion FRS, and even the Toyota GT86, which was the previous model to the GR86. So I've owned this car for a few months. I've put almost 1,000 miles on it so far, and I've done quite a lot to it as far as some performance upgrades go and even some cosmetic looks. So we are going to start off with the suspension. I think that this is the first thing that you should do to a lightweight sports car like this because it's already one of the best handling vehicles on the road simply because of its weight and the low center of gravity that it has. This is one of the best. The Miata is another vehicle. These smaller vehicles, even the Lotus at least, are very good at handling. However, you can lower that center of gravity even more with a proper suspension setup. I have a set of coilovers on this vehicle. I lowered it roughly an inch, just over an inch, both front and rear. And not only has it given it that aesthetic look of eliminating that wheel gap, but it also handles incredible. It is night and day difference between the stock suspension and the suspension. And if this is a vehicle that you plan on doing some autocrosses, maybe some mountain driving and things like that, it's, it's a world of a difference, especially when you get the proper suspension setup. I would highly recommend going with coilovers versus just doing springs, but either way, lowering the car is going to help provide that better handling for those certain situations, and it just looks good. The aesthetic look of lowering a car, eliminating that wheel gap, makes it look that much better. Now, along with the suspension, it's gotta look better with that fitment by making those wheels flush. So you have to either do a new wheel and tire setup or in my case, I did spacers with the stock wheels. So this is a good first step before spending all that money on new wheels and tires. I would like to go with wider tires in the rear too, which will help. It looks a little bit odd with the skinny small tires, especially with them being spaced. But you really don't see that as much and it gives it a much better look with that fitment especially being lowered. Let's move on to number three now. So we have the suspension, we had the wheel and the tire slash spacers as number two. Number three for this particular vehicle is going to be hood struts. Now this is a very, very simple, inexpensive, not really a modification, it's kind of more of an accessory, but it makes a world of a difference. So as we enter this vehicle, we are going to pull on the hood release and then I don't have the hood prop anymore. So I can actually do this with one hand and it's going to raise up and be out of the way. Now, the reason that I think this is a great modification, if you're using or modifying this vehicle, this is something that is going to be tremendously helpful, even though it's such a minor and insignificant part. Getting that hood strut out of the way just gives you more room to work on this vehicle. If you're going to install some aftermarket parts, we'll get to that here in just a little bit but it is also a lot more durable in windy conditions. So like it is right now, it's a bit windy out today and I feel confident with the hood up. If I'm going to car shows or something and I feel like showing off what's underneath the hood, nothing too impressive for this right now, but I've seen a lot of vehicles at car shows where the hood will actually go towards the windshield because it blew up because the prop rod just doesn't give you any support or anything. So this is something that can be done in a matter of minutes to safely and have your hood up and like this. So that's number three. Again, very, very minor. Number four is going to be some kind of body kit. Now, when I go over all these modifications, I don't want to think that I'm trying to rice out a vehicle. And a lot of people think the more you add on, kind of the more riced out it can be, especially with a vehicle like this. But I think if you do it right, if you add the correct parts, you can give it that aesthetic look without making it too much or too overboard. So on my particular car, I went with carbon fiber goodies for it. I added a front lip. As you can tell in carbon fiber, I went with carbon fiber side mirrors too. I really like the lower side skirts because they actually curve with the body lines on this vehicle. And for the 86, I love this line in the lower side skirt. So adding a little bit of flare with the carbon fiber down there I think looks really good. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of these rear spats because they're kind of just there, but they do blend in with the rest of the body kit. And then of course I have the carbon fiber spoiler and you can get different colors. You can go with a body colored one if you want it to be a little bit more subtle, but I think that is a good step just to give you 
more of an aesthetic look for the vehicle. I will actually have all the parts that I have installed on this vehicle down in the description below. You can check out our website where you can purchase everything that I'm going over in today's video. And yeah, the body kit, I think gives it a cool look. Now this car is super, super low. So as I have to get low for that branch there, you just have to keep that in mind when you're doing modifications like this to be mindful of your ground clearance because that front lip is something that could maybe get hit or stuck on something, you know, animal and road, something like that. We are going to jump into the driver's seat now to talk about the rest of the modifications for the 86. And you should be able to hear number five on the list is an exhaust. Now, when I got this car, I didn't know that it actually has some piped in fake exhaust and engine noises. When I bought this car, the previous owner had already unplugged that. So from my perspective, it's much different because I, I didn't hear it, I didn't know because it wasn't plugged in. So this car does have some of that. Let me know if you've heard that in this vehicle, uh, if you own one, because I obviously I couldn't because I had already uh, thrown on this exhaust once I figured that out. And even with it plugged in right now, I decided to plug it back in there's not much of a difference that I can hear. But long story short, with, with my ownership experience, it's not a very loud vehicle. You know, it's a four cylinder. There's only really so much you can do by adding an exhaust, but I do think that you can add the wrong exhaust, just making it sound like raspy, kind of drony, things like that. And this one I actually like. It's not too raspy, but it actually has some pops in the exhaust as well which is really nice to hear. There's no drone or anything like that. It's a four cylinder, so it's not going to be that loud, but I still think, there we go. I still think an exhaust is something that you should do for this, so you can at least get some sound out of it. And it really just livens up the car that much more. Now, along with the exhaust is the intake. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I'll have uh, videos down below or videos on our channel. You can check out the 86 playlist to see all these modifications installed as well as the website down below where you can buy these. But I installed the intake before I installed the exhaust. So I actually got to hear the intake because the exhaust kind of is overpowering from the intake. But when I did the intake first, it actually sounded like it was a turbo car. You could hear just a whoosh right in front of you. You can, you can hear it slightly, but that exhaust is a little bit loud to hear over it. But the intake is going to provide better airflow. It's going to be something that is a little bit easier to clean to over the stock one. And it cleans up the engine bay a little bit more. So you don't have, oh, and we got to avoid so we don't rip off the front lip. Uh, but it, uh, what was I saying? It's not, it's going to clean up the engine bay a little bit more as well. And so you don't have this big bulky plastic stock intake. If you want to make it look a little bit nicer, but you also want that sound and you do want a little bit of performance, it's not going to add much. But once you start adding some more performance mods, all of those start to add up to where you do get some more power and a good sound. Before we talk about the last modification, let's just go back to the suspension that I mentioned earlier because now that the car is actually moving, I can briefly talk about that. I've gone over a lot of suspension uh, videos once I made or once I installed, I made some videos on that, but this car drives so much better with the suspension. It's just like a go-kart for the streets and now it sounds really good too but the last modification that I want to talk about is actually not something that I have on this vehicle so it's something that I've been debating on whether or not to do and that would be a short throw shifter so with the stock one here it's it's a pretty long shifter a short throw shifter would be a little bit more engaging, a little bit quicker in order to shift. And what I've kind of been doing to kind of simulate that is just grabbing up underneath the release where you can put it into reverse and just shifting with my hand down there to kind of mimic 
the short throws. And it, it obviously it's much different, but it feels much tighter and gives me kind of an idea of what a short throw shifter would feel like. It's not something that's going to be that hard to install, but I think it would be cool. I'm just, I'm on the fence about it because there's not a whole lot of performance to it. It's really kind of just the feel and, and you know, going through the gears, things like that. But let's talk about a few other modifications real quick that I haven't done on this car. One of them is going to be turboing or supercharging it. I don't know if that's really something that I wanna spend the money on. This isn't a long-term vehicle for me, but I was able to drive a supercharged uh, Subaru BRZ and it felt like it had a good amount of power. Again, there's really only so much you can do with these cars. When you get it up to about 300 horsepower, it feels pretty adequate for the vehicle. But if you're gonna spend all that money, you might go to another vehicle, maybe something with a V6 in it that's just going to gain even more power benefits. The, the supercharged or turboed, I don't remember what it was, the BRZ had a good power delivery and curve to it. I just, it's a lot of money for a car like this, and I don't doubt it's a lot more fun because it's lightweight, you add at least 100 horsepower to it. Uh, that may just not be something that I'm wanting to do with this because I won't be owning it for that long, but that would be something cool if you own the vehicle long enough because you're talking seven, eight thousand dollars somewhere around there. Uh, other modifications, I really don't know what else you could do. There's a lot of interior cosmetics you could do, really not much else other than maybe some bucket seats, which I would love to do one day. But again, maybe not in this car or this time. You know, you could do a roll cage, you could do harnesses. So if you're autocrossing it, something like that, you can be a little bit more secured into your seat. As far as really anything else goes, let me know what other modifications have you done to this platform that I'm just missing or could possibly do in the time that I own this vehicle. There's a list though of, I believe, seven modifications. They're really relatively inexpensive uh, per part. So it's something that you can easily do and just get a little bit more sound, a little bit better handling characteristics and still keep the car looking relatively stock. That's also something real quick that I like doing with my vehicles. I like them to look like it came off the factory floor. So even with some of the exterior carbon fiber, there's a lot of vehicles that come with carbon fiber. So you could you could argue that they look like they're factory if they were body colored. You know, they would blend in a little bit more, but in some angles they do look straight black just because it's a darker color. But I like everything to look like it's factory for the vehicle and how Toyota designed it. So those are some simple modifications that can make your 86 a little bit more fun to drive. But that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, be sure to check out the link down in the description where you can check out all these parts. And don't forget to check out the GR86 playlist as well. Give the video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.